I almost didn't make class, but it's important that we make it. It's important that, you know, every Tuesday and Thursday we make it here no matter how sick we are, no matter how how tired we are, no matter how, if, if we don't allocate time after all that fatigue and hard work for our goals, then that time will pass anyway in our goals and we'll be no closer to our goal, which is a terrifying concept. Um, wasted time is a terrifying thing. So, there goes my pen. So, um, give me a sec. <laughs> Eloquence followed by stupidity. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to take a look at all of this stuff, uh, fire and flames and sunshine and, and, and do this, uh, do this fire theme class for you guys today. Talk about lighting, talk about warm light, talk about all the things that are good. Turn on my office light because it's not good for my eyes to keep the thingy on, put my glasses on. Okay. So this piece um, is confusing uh, because I'm, I was just sitting here kind of deciding where it can go. The background is too dark or too light, um, depending on you know what we're what we're doing here. You're making these clouds seem really bright. Mm, it's, you're not going in any particular direction, and that's I guess why you're saying when you've uploaded it, it feels a bit amateur. <laughs> you have no depth. Um, the scale is great. The scale definitely feels like the dragon is so large it's bigger than the canvas. The canvas won't fit it. Nothing is more awkward than drawing a big old dragon that you have to tell people, hey, this is big. If it's big, it would be way outside of our line of sight. And we'd only be seeing parts of it. So it's not that amateur. Don't sell yourself too short. You made a good choice not to show all of the dragon. And you're already like throwing part of the dragon into the distance. The wing is getting, sorry, I ate some, like, I ate 10 olives, like, at lightning speed <laughs> before class. I just eat olives right out of the can. It's so good. Um, so, or the glass. Um, so, yeah, what we have here is, is some good instinct for depth, good instinct for perspective. But there are some things that are just confusing me. Uh, for instance, is this a worm, not a dragon? Uh, because it seems to be finishing off into a tail, a really simple tail, so um, might might benefit, you know, to add to the scale effect to make the dragon a bit thicker down here. Uh, then we have the time of day. I don't get it. Is it sunset? If it is, we're looking at the dark half of the sky because the sun is setting, pointing at the light, half the hemisphere, um, half the sky area, the sky space is dark. So when you're ever in a sunset, look up during a really extreme sunset, which is the only time you get colors like this. Um, imagine this is the surface of the earth uh, where you're standing, and this is the sky dome above you. All right, so this is the dome of the sky where you're standing. This is the sun setting, shining its light that way. At one point or another, the sky starts to darken in a gradient because the light of the sun doesn't pass. It, doesn't, it no longer sits directly this way and everything is illuminated, at one point or another the sun is either nearing the horizon or beneath the horizon and that's when we get these really really amazing colors um, and it's moving dark that way. So half the sky is dark, the lighter half of the sky is where the sun set and that's it. So are we looking at that part in the sky? Are we looking at the dark half? Is the dragon like somewhere here and we're here and we are seeing this very obvious gradient, which only happens during sunset. There wouldn't be a gradient when the sun is this high because it's just everything is so equally illuminated. You, the more gradients you show in the sky, the weirder the sky feels. It feels like it's made out of mud and it's no longer this massive thing. So you have a lot of things to do with this painting. You have the option of making the background dark and what's the opposite of orange as the night sets in as it rolls in would be purple so these are just really general rules I've decided that help me establish a better scene if you don't agree with the sciences I've covered right now and you're you know you got science blue balls as I say it you want to talk about how much science you know make make a video and talk about how much science you know but this is as much science as I need as an artist so right now what we're looking at 
is a darker half of the sky and and we are kind of just darkening right behind on a gradient and that's going to allow me to really push forth that glow of the direct sunlight in, in the direct foreground on this dragon and so the light is now shining on the dragon but what if this is option number two what if the light is not beneath the horizon line it is a sunset but enough that odds are you know we're still getting lights like this it's still sunset out but it's still bright enough to pull off a brighter background which is much better in my opinion for the scene because then we get a real silhouette for the dragon which will help us with the render and I feel like a bright background would do a lot more because then we have this bright background because you can't really establish depth at sunset perspective in depth perspective at sunset is non-existent because there's just it's just dark and so you don't catch the variation between mountains in the distance and mountains in the foreground you just don't have depth anymore because the oxygen and you know the the air and the illumination and the light in the atmosphere is no longer there to illuminate this air and show us where it is when we're kilometers away from a mountain and then obviously create that atmospheric perspective so a brighter background does a lot more for the scene and we're looking directly up at the sky so we we would it would warrant you know if you want to do a pink wash if you want to do like a kind of more a celestial kind of beautiful magical scene go right ahead um but uh, but this i believe is your better option that allows us to darken the foreground just a little bit more and i just want to see what burn tool has for me show me what you got burn tool Mm, don't like it. Uh, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just hand pick a cooler pink color for that foreground, and we can make all of these clouds in the foreground just a little bit darker. So it's a lot of ways that you can make this work, but I really like the one where we have light behind because then we have a silhouette. So let's clean this up. We've got too much soft brush everywhere. I'm gonna to try to lasso and see what I can do. But do you see, I mean, it, you do have the option of making it nighttime. I think that's also a bit charming. But if it's a dark sunset scene and you're also trying to create a celestial dragon, is that really the best way to represent a celestial dragon at nighttime um, or at sunset? I mean, if it was a fire flame kind of elemental dragon, I would I would say it's cool to channel all that flaming sunset. Um, and you again, you can still have a sunset, uh, but still have better lighting that'll help us make it the, make the subject the dragon. So we have enable go here. Select inverse, delete, and the background is lighter. I'm going to preserve this lasso as much as possible. <clears throat> and I'm just going to duplicate this. And you can see how far away the sky feels when we have a bright background. And then we allow that lower portion, those clouds at the base, to be darker as if they're part of the dragon or the dragon when he moves, you know, there's, you know, massive atmospheric change around him. Or, and he kind of feels like he's rising from above the clouds and out. Okay, so we have a brighter background. And this background color, have fun with it. I mean, it doesn't have to be this, this really, really uh, boring kind of palette you can go for something a little bit more you know cool but I'll try to stick to your original choices as much as possible but I, I really like the blue because it feels like it's sunset but we're still bright enough in the background to have some of the sky blue come through but if it's a really sandy maybe uh, it's emerging from the dunes or the sky and the and then the sand is kind of merged together we have that and now we're explaining where all this highlighter is coming from which is the highlighter you placed on top of the dragon's face 
lots and lots of things we can do. We can make it so that he's emerging out of the shadow of the sunset and into an, in, uh, his own light. So let me select this lasso, go back down here and kind of just uh, do that thing I did a couple classes ago where I'm making the dragon kind of light up and then I'm going to delete away. where the shadow, you know, where he emerges from the shadow. Just like that. So he's just starting to come out of the shadow of the sunset. And it could be the, you know, it looks like that. It could be across his chest. It could be his head is barely cutting through. And we have some cool subsurface through the wings. And then we have some touching up on that. And then we just need to make the background in this case. Let me just do something real quick now. The background um, a bit brighter. As if he's coming right out of the shadow. And that would result also in the, in the need for a, a superimposed kind of cast shadow that sits purple on top of the lower half of the canvas with a darkened mode. And you can still do those billows and billows of cloud underneath him. But I think a really, really cool light background. There's just so many options, which is why I was staring at this before class. There's just a lot of options for you to work with that make this, um, you know, seem a little bit more dramatic. But I'm going to make choices based off the choices you made. But just see how dark he is. Um, and then just see where we go from there. And I'm just going to backtrack before where that sky was a little more orange. And yeah. So <coughs> the, the reason why the dragon doesn't feel colossal is because there's really no atmospheric perspective applied to him. If he's off into the distance, he's going to fade. He's, he's fading into the distance. And so for us to really get that impact, he has to look like he's way off into the background. And that's a big part of that is using the, the sky color as a way to throw him into the distance. And then I would just throw in a big white band just there just to help make the dragon feel far away. So now we have a more unified representation of the time of day. The dragon is part of the distance, but he still looks like he's his, doing his own thing. What? <laughs> Did you guys hear that? She was just like, meow. Are you okay? Huh? What's up? What's come up, OC? All right, so I'm just cleaning the silhouette of that dragon. You okay, mommy? You okay? I think she got up from a nightmare. <clears throat> okay, so this one is the one that I would go with. We've established the depth. We've set up the, 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 the light environment. One really cool thing is that if we had a depth marker, which is having a more um, like really obvious representation of the dragon scale. And so we have somebody kind of looking up and pointing at the dragon. Um, and, uh, or maybe some trees, or maybe houses. Oh, houses need to be in perspective. Uh, freehand, three point. <laughs> okay, that's terrible. Um, but basically the horizon is so low, the camera's pointed directly up, so we don't see anything like that. But what, one really cool, you know, perspective marker is just pine trees that are kind of being bent out of the way because the dragon's kind of like on top of everything and we're kind of creating an unofficial three-point perspective towards the bottom half. But let's get back to the dragon. Um, so some of the issues you have here is obviously a texture issue with the 
I'm going to duplicate that. With the clouds, um, we have <coughs> the feeling like the clouds are almost fabric-like. He just mer emerged from the clouds, and he's got like this translucent skirt of clouds just following him. And that doesn't feel like that, not only because you didn't use the proper brush, but you painted it as if it's concrete and not see-through. And clouds have this beautiful way of just showing what's behind them while still being opaque at the same time. I just love clouds. And so that's all we had to do is just show some of the background coming through. Clouds also have a very distinct, respectable silhouette all in their own. It's not just a shapelessness at the same time as being soft and, and see-through. Um, clouds have a real shape to them. And when clouds are in motion, they kind of look like whipped cream. They kind of just, you know, collapse under the motion of what's just, you know, come through and we kind of have like trailing clouds and they kind of just bend over themselves when something just passed by. Or, you know, they just collapse whilst, while still maintaining their shape. So I would just keep all of this but with a base value and then think about where the light source is coming from and shade each chunk that I chose against the light source that's illuminating absolutely everything already. So it's, it's a really basic form study of clouds and you just have to make sure that clouds cast shadows on each other as well on themselves. And now we have a real distinct representation of the cloud and that's how you get it, get it to read quick, quickly. Clouds in the distance, we see more of their little cottage cheese texture because they're more in the distance, so we see more of the cloud. We see more cloud, therefore we see more billows or more chunks, scoops. Okay. Um, and then we just have to think about which of these clouds are in the shadow and which are being exposed to the light source. So I wouldn't say there's a full cloud sitting on, it's more vapor. And I wouldn't say like it's sitting directly on him. So it did look amateur in that you weren't really treating the piece with your, you know, light environment in mind. But it's not amateur in what you decided you were going to paint and how you painted the dragon proper. I think you did a really good job. And then I just want to cast a shadow of the dragon because these clouds are somewhat see-through. So the shadow of the dragon should still come through somehow. <clears throat> and the shadow is always just slightly displaced or slightly to the side. It's not always going to be directly underneath like I just did here. Sometimes the shadow it sits right there instead or right there. It just depends on how you want to interpret the shadow, if the light is coming from above down, which it is, then the shadow would be sitting underneath him. But if it's coming from an angle, the shadow would be just somewhere there. And it's just the slightest little bit. Remember, we're working in layers. There's no rush. There's no requirement to, you know, rush anything. Just take your time and figure out the physics of it all. Break the physics down. So this is all just staging. This is all just setting things up. Um, you can put more clouds. You can reestablish that beautiful base gradient of light that's coming through because we're still looking at the sky and we're not, the clouds aren't touching the surface of the earth. You know, we're still getting some of that sunlight just like that. So it feels more ethereal, feels more in the distance. And then we've got the dragon being exposed to that much light. And I would just go ham on that golden chest. I would try to pull off as much contrast as I can while still keeping him in his depth. And this is where you start painting the dragon. Everything else was staging. And see how much is, staging is worth. It's worth, uh, you know, it's everything. I'm trying to make it while we still have the muscles intact. And everything is just catching a little bit of light. We have a little bit of the background visible. It just depends on how golden he is. 
And that's just some of the light shining through, revealing him. And then we have the part of the wing that is in the distance and the part of the wing that is in the foreground. And that means, that means motherfucker. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> fucking Photoshop. Um, even though I clicked, all right, anyway, um, delete that. And I'm just gonna get the new lasso. Oh, fuck it. And um, try to get this wing out. And we're just basically saying this part of the wing is closer to us. Than the far wing, which is in the distance more. Oh, not dissolve. All right. So we're bringing it closer, even though that's not how you kind of did this, did this, uh, this, this, uh, shape, this perspective on the dragon. The, the, the clouds, of course, aren't part of the dragon, so they kind of get some of their own light. Try to do it with mid tones because I don't want to overdo dodge tool. It looks like shit when you overdo it. And, and then I'm gonna select the background and just see what I can do with a little bit more give on that sky value. I mean, it, it's it looks great even if you shoot up to white. It adds more to that divinity, and you can see how dark it was before, which is why I'm still struggling with the sky color. And then we just have some more of that brightness just shooting in that vapor. And I wouldn't, this is the reason why it looks awkward to me still, this, this cloud, is that I, I would have added this cloud way after, you know, I would have added it a long time ago. I mean, I wouldn't have, I mean, I would have finished the dragon a long time ago and then added the cloud because I just feel like the cloud is an accessory. And I can't make it symmetrical because then it really looks cheap. You know, it has to be asymmetrical. You know, the clouds are pulling up and the issue here is that this doesn't really look like vapor. It just looks like actually part of his wing. So I would want to Just do something about that so it doesn't look that cheap. Okay, and then I'm going to desaturate because that cloud got dodged. And I still, I still want to try that shadow, that long, beautiful shadow, that cast shadow. It'll just add so much more. And then I'm just going to desaturate the swing. And not that it needs a smudge, it really just needs a blur. I would um, just get rid of that. Where the wing is supposed to be is somewhere like there. Um, that's where I feel like the wing is supposed to be to help us establish the most depth. And then we can see some vapor trails moving that way and that would be really cool you kind of just kept the perspective kind of low it kind of feels like he's deliberately bending this wing down to accommodate the camera and your skill level <laughs> i'm sorry i don't need to be such a savage um so i'm just gonna try to let at least his wing come up from the outsides just to help and then of course you always have our beloved light layer and I'm gonna just do that on the outskirts of the canvas because we still need to show the power of that sunset and then it just it's your it's your choice how you want to ex execute that cast shadow if you even want one 
really what it is is like it's the shadow of a mountain that sat on top of everything so I don't know if I even have the skill to pull this off but let's try so select inverse new layer I'm gonna trust my instincts and go with purple and just throw down just throw down you know and just uh try to create that shadow it's not the shadow of the dragon it's like the shadow of a nearby mountain or something put it on dark and so it just sits with the environment and some of these clouds having emerged oh my god what is that stupid ass dumbass shortcuts um now that they emerged they get some more of that brightness so i'm just selecting the ones that are in relief just making sure my lasso makes sense and then highlights not the whole oh my crapping god oh my fucking god like i'm on photoshop why does it have to go to a different you're kidding me you're kidding me right now you gotta be kidding me um half the cloud is in the light it's not the whole thing shouldn't say oh my crapping god um but yeah some of the some of the clouds are relieved from that shadow and this is a very general place marker i feel like it adds drama i think it's really cool um to add that shadow and just to give you an idea this shadow can sit like all the way up here and the dragon that's in the shadow outside of the sky value so let me show you because i really want to just show it off um we're combining a lot of the stuff I experimented with early on. Um, and we are grabbing that same purple again. It's just like a purpley shadow. We're throwing it on top. I'm going to darken it just a touch more. Saturate it. Put it on darken. And then just decide where the shadow is going to be. And then just cut what I don't want to be in shadow. So it, it can just be the very tops, just like that, that just barely break through. I think it's cool. I would love it. Um, and then obviously because we did this, the, the, there's, it's a new lighting scenario slightly. So it means that the dragon has to be more drowned in sunlight, just like that. I think that's a really solid composition. Um, it's a it's a solid plate on which to dress it with more detail. I think you have an awesome awesome setup to bring in some. Uh, so this is nice, but this is just and um, and you can really have fun with the uh, with just what is visible in the shadow. You know which parts are going to come through. And I think this is good for the. For the detail here and then you can just have that fog kind of sitting on the bottom of the painting and it's just like these mountains that are um casting these shadows as the dragon emerges from the cloud range slightly below the mountains but still not relieved from the mountain shadow and now i'm just um addressing the texture changes from my lasso which are really important my, my, my lasso undid the textures of the soft brush uh, edge of the clouds, so I'm going in with my smudge brush. And my smudge brush, my whole brush set is on sale at the moment if you guys want to grab that. Okay. <coughs> okay. I think this is great. I love that little bit of gray here. And look, look, we can really set desat gray has a wonderful way of revealing 
everything else. So if we just throw a full solid gray under there, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't have a problem. That's a full solid gray down there. And it's like there's a storm system underneath these clouds. Isn't that great? And we're not missing it. But if you want to keep that purple, you know, if you feel like it, it adds to your painting, you can keep it. And then this dragon, though we threw a dodge tool over everything, I would go back still and try to address the parts of the dragon that are not looking at the light, just so I can still have some definition and not have a cheap representation of form. You know, so this part of the dragon here is in shadow. There's the cast shadow. Whoops. <clears throat> she said she doesn't have the skills to pull this off. This joke ever. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And um, let me just see. So anything that the light does not touch gets a bit of shadow. And it's not that I want to darken a light thing. It's just I want to give it a different value just so it looks like we have some form on the dragon, that there are parts of it that are illuminated but still generally darker from the zones that don't get any light. And it doesn't even have to be a shadow color. As you can see, I use like a mid-tone. And a lot of these choices I made without any knowledge of how it's going to look at the end. Sometimes the befores and afters surprise me as much as they surprise you. Um, and that's just because you got to trust the fundamentals to carry you the rest of the way. When you can't envision the final, that's okay. Not a lot of people can envision it. I mean, I'm about to redo my home and, and I, I just bought a house. Congratulations to me. <laughs> everywhere I've called and I'm trying to set up my home insurance I'm trying to set this up that up they're just like congratulations so I just you know I'm doing you a favor and just saying it for you um I can't imagine how it's gonna look I know what it looks like now and how it looks like now is just and I it's not allowing me to get a final picture of how this is going to look in the end but I'm making fundamental choices for the structure of the house uh, concepts that I know work for designing a house um, and, and, and renovating an interior space. And I'm going to trust those fundamentals. I'm going to be like, I'm making these decisions because I know they're fundamental. You know, open concept, match colors, find an accent backsplash, you know, all that crazy shit. Find an earth tone that you go back to, especially if you're into earth tone. I can't imagine for the life of me how this kitchen, living room, uh, dining room area is going to look. I can't. I'm an artist and I can't envision something. It feels weird to do that. But it doesn't mean that these fundamentals are going to flop just because you as the host can't envision how they'll look. They're going to look good whether you like it or not. They're going to look good whether you imagine them or not. So if you trust that your light environment is supposed to be bright enough, if you decide on a specific time of day because you were in the middle, you were in the safe zone, and really nothing is worse than a gray background. It's so gross. You're either nighttime in the dramatic saturation or you're in daytime and you have that brightness necessary to pull off the scene. And though there are many combinations, and I suggest looking up references, like I looked up plane uh, landing and sunset, um, uh, airplane sunset, and I tried to decide on, you know, what 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 looked cool, what what I wanted to channel, but not necessarily copy. So this one really really inspired me. I liked how the glare kind of got in the way of the dark uh, silhouette of the wing of the plane. So I was like, okay, I like this one. And then I like how it's dark as well as parts of the clouds facing the sunset are light. I liked how the sky was dark, but not because the sky was dark, but because the clouds were also in silhouette. Um, and that's something you can do as well if you want to uh, pull off the, you know, more background. Another thing that I save to the end is that saturation line. Um, and anywhere where the, where the dragon only just breached The light is where it's going to get that saturation belt. And it's just a new color. And then I'm just going to slightly desaturate anything above that belt just to give the belt some uh, intrigue. The dragon is still super bright. I'm just letting some of that sit like this. Um, let's do something crazy. I don't even know if it's going to work. Then again, I never really do. And we're just seeing what happens all right so we're gonna saturate I don't think I have enough saturation but that looks cool for some reason but not what I'm looking for 
something like that okay some some pink darker value there we go that's what i want and this is just just to show you that the background doesn't have to be super bright you can still go for something a little less dramatic and then you just have to darken him accordingly because if we darken the background he's not getting as much exposure but we can still have a cast shadow but obviously this one feels great it looks great and I'm just gonna bring in that glare I am gonna brighten the background one more time just to show you that it's there's no danger in choosing a specific end of the spectrum for the background if you want to brighten it brighten it it's really just only going to help the drama it's not going to hinder it so before after slight shift and it's your choice really if you want to keep it i would do a gradient of it which i already kind of did but that's the glare and it's not it's kind of over the top at the moment just like that So yeah, I'm really super terrified of buying a house. I'm scared of the commitment. I'm really bad with commitment. And, um, but I was just sick and tired of answering to landlords and not being able to do what I wanted with my house. And I'm just getting those, you know, cold feet that everybody gets before, like, something big in their life happens. <clears throat> but it's not cold feet. Like, I'm still ecstatic about the whole thing. I'm just, you know, worried at the end of the day that it might be a bad investment. It might be, you know. But at the, you know, at the end, I'm a builder. And I, I love the chance to make it into something better. I've never sat in a room and not, you know, a, a bad room and not, like, fixed it up. Even when I was younger, before I fall asleep in the guest house or something, I would fix up the room before going to sleep. <laughs> in my mind um so i'm excited to to buy a house to get started and all of that but still kind of nervous so i'm just putting in these depth markers they're dark and in the foreground you can saturate them they can't really be green i mean you can push them towards a more organic shape a value just down here but they, but they can't be green you can't make them this color it's not going to work because they're it's not daytime so you don't get daytime colors all right you get nighttime value and it's a drawing for the for pete's sake you can make them purple trees um they're still in the shape of a pine tree they're still going to work and i'm going to put them in complete nighttime and uh hopefully that helps us and i can't wait um for the summer because I'm going to be able to build a patio and all that. I can't wait to have fun with that. Um, fashion blur. But yeah, remember how last time I was like the inspection, you know, scaring the crap out of me. But the inspection's done and done. And we like the results of it. The foundation is good. The, the, the shape is good. The bones are healthy. And we're just, you know gonna fix everything else over time it's a good house that hasn't been abused you know it's been well taken care of and I think it's only housed one family continuously um, and it's really old that's something I'm worried about but it's got new new bait like basic stuff is new and that's gonna be nice I don't have to worry about the roof or the furnace or you know, all that or the boiler or whatever it is that's new okay and that's it um in front of this layer what you can also do is just completely throw this in the distance all right that's cool in my opinion i like the drama especially if there's like a league of Leg legends like thingy in front of it um this is at zero fade uh total fade and this is at colossal fade like it's so far away we can barely see the shift and the ch and the change in the in the in the sky so that you, you always have that if you don't want to if you don't want to you can keep it um dark i like a little bit of everything all right so now we have a ground 
Now we have a background. Um, now we have, let me just uh, blur this for filter, blur, Gaussian blur. It may be darkened in the foreground and there may be pine detail, but it's not important. I'm, I'm blurring this. It's not our most immediate uh, PO, PO, POI, point of interest. Okay, any questions at all? House design challenge. <laughs> You can't live in an investment, just enjoy it for the present. Um, well, an investment of my effort and time, I think, is what I mean. Um, always notice how the focal point has the most detail, but to see it in a cloudy setup is du super duper. Called complementary colors, one of the six other general methods of how to choose your color. Um, why I chose purple, yeah. But also because daytime yellow, nighttime blue. <laughs> And blue or variations of blue, such as blue-purple, which is kind of what I chose. <clears throat> oh, yeah, they, they, I, I was going to add one more little layer in the foreground. Complete gray, like complete gray value. And just sit them, sit some fog just here. But it, it's, it's not so much fog, it's just the rest of the clouds. But if you feel like adding a fog as if the, you know, the dude came in with on a fog you can always do that I was gonna add the fog but at the end of the day it doesn't look like stormy skies um, but if we're in that kind of shadow then we are and you can see the shape of the mountain right right there just the shape of the mountain he's just coming across it across it and that's it um, I hope you guys enjoyed this there's so much more we can do we can get the original uh, values I chose for the clouds and give them some you know some extra shape you know, so we can get we can get a little bit more detail in there in this far left half of the canvas. We can get that orange and just sit it there. We, 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 there's a lot more you can do and still get away with it as long as you're within your value range that you established. Um, and I think that's what matters. Is that no matter what change is upcoming, we're not going to undo the work we just did. Mr. Beck, I would fix your house for mentorship and Doma. <laughs> you know how to fix houses? So you know, do you know I make the best Doma? <laughs> how do you know I make the best Doma, Islam? Uh, okay, I will give you mentorship for free if you come fix my house and I'll make you some Doma. Has OC inspected the new space? Let her be the spiritual inspector. Um, I'm not scared. I'm not scared of bad spirits. I had a dream of the owner. I think I had a dream of the owner's dad. I'm a dreamer. I'm, I dreamed shit that was real. And it comes up and it becomes real in real life. I know that's really weird. Uh, it's okay to talk about it if you are if you, if you have dreams. It's not okay to like belie your dreams. That's when you're going to stop getting it. I believe that dreams connect us to, this, to the cosmos. But I've been having weird dreams and I didn't feel any negative energy coming from the house. Neither did Abu. And that was one big thing I was concerned about is uh, whether or not it feels good, but a house feels clean, you know, it feels spiritually clean. A really just happy-go-lucky group of people lived in there. Um, but it does feel old. Basic things that build up over time, you know, a lot of energy, negative, I know this sounds like mumbo jumbo to a lot of you, but I really believe in this stuff. I believe that though we do not revisit houses and people don't haunt people, um, I think that our energy stays behind. And any bad things that happen stay in that, in that area for a long time. So I, I didn't feel that kind of thing. Can I ask you to paint the fog the same way as clouds or fog has less shape and is more uniform? Yes, uh, fog is more like a really thin veil. Clouds have full on structure to them. Sirak has visions. <laughs> I do, I really do. I have crazy, crazy visions. <clears throat> um. It's like you're on top of a mountain with a few trees and the clouds are close. Uh, yeah, you have that too. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like I should tilt this. <clears throat> What's really weird is that in December, I didn't even think about buying a house. And in January, it's just like quickly coming together. The month is not even over. I looked at the house January 4th. I, I called about a house. I already am about to close. I already signed a contract today. So it happened so quickly. Um... But in December, I was getting these crazy dreams about Neptune, the, the, the planet Neptune. Isn't that crazy? 
night after night after night, I dream about Poseidon or I dream about Neptune. And I didn't know really what Neptune looked like, uh, the, the planet itself. And I was like, I just dreamt of a big blue planet and it was just Poseidon and I dreamt of Neptune. And, and Evo looks it up and it's like big changes are coming and whatnot. And then just a couple of days, you know, something happens that makes us want to leave these apartments and um, start, start, you know, moving in a different direction in our lives. We want to have more, you know, bonfires and more of this, more of that. And it's the space to do anything I want. I've always been into construction, so I'm so happy. And like comparing where my mindset was in October, you know, November, when I was just miserable to where I am now, I'm just so, so thankful and so grateful that these changes have happened. And um, yeah, for the dragon's anatomy, I really don't get it. Um, I recommend you go in there and just start cleaning him up. Um, even though he's in the distance, doesn't mean, you know, he doesn't get any real structure. Not really sure what you want to do with his anatomy. Um, I do believe that objects in the distance do need to be blurred. So let me try something crazy. Um, I mean, if he's the focal point, don't blur him. But objects at the edge of the canvas at least blur some stuff at the edge of the canvas. <clears throat> I like a mountain range thing. That's fast for closing. Yeah, it's fast. Um, I mean, closing is going to happen on its own, but uh, but signing contracts is pretty fast that we sign the contracts and we managed to get the price drop like shit ton <laughs> because the house was old and we couldn't do anything with it um without the price dropping so he dropped the price very nicely <clears throat> so before kind of muddy it looks like he was emerging from lava and that's why because the the clouds are glowing more than the background which is not acceptable um, and then after, obviously, a dramatic change, the background is bright so that we can have that kind of ethereal glow that you were kind of hinting at with the, with the yellow that you were using. Um, if it is a dark sunset scene and it's nighttime and the clouds are glowing, that's a completely different uh, uh, composition. But here we have, a, we have space, we have a distance, and we have a foreground, we have scale, and we have atmospheric uh, depth. Um, and I, I like that. And we have something interesting. A cast shadow is like a necklace on your painting. It's an accessory. It's beautiful. It's, it's, it's a dress, uh, to dress up your painting. A cast shadow is a beautiful point of interest. It, as you can see, the cast shadow is just a big block. It's the dragon that's a point of interest, but the cast shadow just dressed him up. Um, and that's what I mean. For this one, uh, don't have time to look at it. I might look at it in, on Thursday. But I, I, I really don't know where you're going composition-wise. Lighting-wise, I won't talk about it, but composition-wise, the framing is, is all bad. Um, the main explosion is down here. You have a character that's really difficult to read because he's got these thick, chunky thighs, and he looks like he's looking that way, but he's not. And he's got a tiny little head, and all of his silhouette with all of his character intrigue is hidden with his cloth, with his, with his thing. Everything else is just messy brush strokes. Um, and those might have been, you know, some mild contemplation of your brush strokes and color just to have some fun. But composition shouldn't be something that's a mild. Composition is a fixed concept. Write that back to me. Meaning that if you're, you're either taking a good photograph or you're not. Also write that back to me. Um, yeah, so, so please make sure you guys are looking into uh, the necessary amount of uh, you know, research, the necessary amount of exposure in, in cinema and framing. You're looking at your movies and you're looking at how this was framed. It's not willy-nilly. They didn't just point the camera anywhere and hope to God that the character was in the scene. No, they knew exactly where they were pointing the camera. You guys are painting and hoping to God the character ends up in the scene. Um, this is just bad framing. I feel like if you lowered the camera a little bit, if we put the camera at his feet, if we put the camera at his feet looking up at him and the explosion happened behind him, Hollywood style, anything, anything that is a better representation than this really bad, quick, captured, found footage camera shot of this dude by, by the fire. Who, I don't know why he's not getting barbecued. Um, you see what I'm saying? You have the brightest point here and you have this dude standing here super stiff, super awkward. Uh, if this explosion happened, his 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 clothes would just be just be moving in this direction. So now you have a little bit more energy, kinetic energy in the scene. But this is just billowing as if a slight breeze just just rushed through. 
So this does not look like a, a slight breeze. It looks like a straight up nuclear blast. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So try that. Try doing it again. Um, and that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys learned something today and would like to contribute to the class's uh, posterity and, and and help sustain the class uh, for the coming years, I am trying to I'm campaigning to get everyone on board for as as watchers, which is just a dollar a month. But if everybody on our um, Reddit joined as a dollar a month, I really wouldn't need to constantly ask for you guys' support through Patreon. YouTube doesn't really monetize my videos. I'm not even breaking 100k because uh, I if my videos are too long and I guess they're no longer recommended. Uh, only a handful of subscribers are getting notifications and then and then there's just a bunch of other stuff that's happening as well with the with the Child Protection Act or something. Um, so I'm not really seeing my channel grow as it should considering the amount of content I'm putting in two videos a, a week eight videos a month um, each almost an hour or more than an hour long and I'm getting no like I'm barely going up there in the viewers and then the subscribers that's weird that's really weird to me I've seen other channels post hour-long videos and they're like camping channels and people just do bushcraft and go outside and, and camp and they have hour-long videos or I've seen videos where people, you know, I've been watching renovation videos and they're an hour long and they broke 100K easily and they have hour long videos and content. I'm not getting any kind of marketing or any kind of, not that I would, but, you know, um, sponsorships or anything like that. Um, and that's because I'm not working with an agency. It's not like I'm waiting for them to come, but at the same time, I just think it's unusual that my at least my subscriber count is not moving as it used to. I, I used to be really fast. I hit I went from 50 to 90 in three months one year, and I was crazy. I was so sure I was going to break 100k by the end of the year, but I just didn't, and I haven't, and I, I haven't even checked it. I mean, it's almost there, but it's just not moving. It's gone to like a subscriber a day, um, which is really weird. So um, I. Would love for if you guys joined as a watcher uh, to help support the channel. I do spend a lot of my time. Um, that's it's my main job. I don't really I don't have a day job. This is what I do. Uh, so if you guys want to support and show your support, a dollar a day, twelve dollars a year. Um, if you guys feel like going through the checkout um, of Patreon, feel free to join as a patron, as a watcher. That's why I call you guys watchers. Uh, because it, it is really like watching over the community um, and it's not just patronage but if you want educational material you have other tiers that come with different um, uh, 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 rewards <laughs> and that's it for today thank you everyone for watching if you want to upload stuff on for class and get critiqued as you did today every every critique is an educational um, uh, has an educational uh, benefit to it so join us on reddit and please, when it comes to Reddit, behave. I've seen so many complaints. I've seen so many little bickerings. If you're not ready to get critiqued, do not post on Reddit. Go away. If you are ready to get critiqued, if, you're, if, you've, if you've matured, feel free to join again. Um, that's all I'm going to say to that. Uh, post everything with your references. Don't lie about not using references. That's just petty, and I'll know right away because I've done this for over a decade, and I know when something is used. You, when someone's used a, 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 a reference because it doesn't make sense they have that much organic visual library but they can't control an edge that's unusual um, by the time you get that much organic library in your mind for human faces you can use an edge <clears throat> so that's it uh, thank you everyone for joining I'll see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time Thursday the 23rd uh, fair warning that hopefully I'm moving before the end of the month um, and I will be uh, I will be working on my house. I will be moving. I will be very very busy and very tired. As you know, I have a back problem, and I don't know how I'm going to fare medically with all the upcoming work ahead of me. Um, but uh, but I will try my best to at least make it. If we can get internet set up in the new place, um, good internet, I will try to join at least for uh, for Thursdays, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. If not, um, we're looking at a February to March break, which is crazy. I know. Uh, but I will try my absolute best to at least get my office up and running. Uh, my corner uh, at least can, can just be set up, flooring or not, and, uh, and get back to you guys as soon as I can. Thank you everyone for joining today. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye!